Hi guys. <clears throat> cool. Um, we got a couple questions, um, which is great. I talked a little bit at the end of the last segment, which I think was probably good too. Um, so let me jump in. Um, <laughs> to start off, uh, Smackster uh, created a lovely overlay for me that I'm not using. Um, I apologize, Smackster. I did not uh, see this until after I started streaming. Um, I don't know if, if it went up somewhere beforehand. Um, uh, so it's, it is indeed lovely. Uh, I like to have um, a sense of branding. Uh, so... I don't know if I'm going to use it consistently, but I will give it a shot. Uh, I'll, I'll at least try it out in the next one, or um, I'll play around with it a little bit in the uh, in the next week um, and let you know how that goes. Uh, and we'll uh, uh, yeah, we'll, I'll try it. It's it is it's nice though. Um, uh, if I remember, I will put a link to it in the. Uh, YouTube comments uh, so that people can check it out. Um, it's a it's it's very very nice. It's very well put together. Thank you very much. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, do you think this game would be as enjoyable if it didn't tap into nostalgia that much? Um, no. Uh, I think okay so. I think that um, there's legitimately, you know, something to the Quest for Glory formula, to that sort of genre. Hi, kitten. You are not supposed to be up here, baby. Do you know that? Do you pay any attention to that? You don't. Thank you. Good girl. Um, I, I think that, like, the this... This style of game has some significant advantages, at least for some players, myself included, over typical, like your, your standard adventure game. Um, and so in the same way that the adventure game genre is potentially viable, I mean, people are still making adventure games. Gemini Rue, uh, great example of a modern, old school adventure game doesn't really update the formula in a significant way uh but it's really good uh and it was fun it was still fun to play uh the ending could have been better but um you know the game was great um i think that the quest for glory formula is uh is at least as viable as as that sort of old school point and click adventure game um that said, I have an enormous amount of nostalgia for it, and so even if the game is good, I'm going to be bringing something to the table in terms of, you know, what I'm reliving while I play it. It's hard for me to tell just yet how good this game is. Um, I think that it has potential. It might be a tough stream. I'm going to keep streaming it next week. I mean, we're going to keep going for a little while. We're going to at least give this a few a few weeks. We're going to get some hours into it. Um, but we might... It's possible that, that we won't finish this game if it's just not that fun to stream. Um, hi, baby. Come on. Can you... Can we not do that? Thank you. Um... Come here, just let me pet you. Here we go. Uh, on the other hand, like maybe it's gonna pick up a little bit once we, um, you know, get all of our our uh, sort of tutorial restraints taken off. Um, maybe it's gonna be a little less linear, or maybe it's gonna become a little bit more action packed. Um, I don't know. Uh, it, like I think it's it's certainly got potential to be a really good game. I don't know that the writing is as strong as it was in Gemini Ru, and that's uh, uh, too bad. Um, but um, I think it could still be fun. I'd be curious to see the opinions of people who don't have the same nostalgia that I do 
Uh, do you feel like this game is just not bringing anything to the table? Um, it's hard for me to, to judge that objectively. Okay. Um, we have a bunch of questions now. Uh, so, but I will, I'm just going to go through uh, the, the Kappa questions as well. What is your favorite pasta dish? I am uh, partial to uh, tortellinis. Um, why, and, and raviolis, stuffed pastas are really good. Uh, why must this game series always start you off so pathetically weak and incompetent compared to the normal NPCs around you? I'm, I'm hesitating because I feel like that is not unique to this game series. Um... There are some adventure games, and maybe a lot of adventure games, where you start off as a like, really competent person, um, but there are very few RPGs where that's true. Almost universally, no, well, okay, I'll, I'll take that back, because it's not really almost universal anymore. Uh, but if you go back 10 or 15 years, almost universally, in RPGs, you start off as the most pathetic person in the entire world, and you got to build up your stats. And that's especially true of the, like, um, yeah, oh, there's your D10. You want to roll? You want to roll for something? There you go. Um, uh, the, um, Yeah, I was making a brilliant articulate point. So just, you know, imagine the conclusion of that for yourselves. Um, oh, yeah, starting off really low level. Okay, so I mean, like the real answer is you gotta, you need to, um, you need an arc for the character for the player experience, right? Like, like you want the player to start off. You want the player to end up feeling powerful. And in order to end up feeling powerful, you need a contrasting state to compare that to. So you want the character to start off feeling weak. Uh, now, you can take that to an extreme, uh, and then there's a narrative disconnect where you say like, hey, I'm an adventurer, I'm a hero, I'm coming to town for the first time, look at how much worse I am at everything than everybody. Uh, and that can be weird. I totally get what you're saying, but the the more pathetic you are when you start off, the more you feel the change as you get better. And when you reach your peak, the more you feel like you are somewhere completely different than where you started. Um, and I think that's the motivation behind it, just from an experience standpoint. But I would also say, it's not just Quest for Glory that does that. It's it's any RPG, like, look at the early Final Fantasy games. Look at, um... Oh god, I don't even know. Um... But if you, if you look at RPGs from that era, like, this is a pretty common thing. Um... How well do you think this game recaptures Quest for Glory feeling? It looks very accurate from an outsider's perspective as someone who's only seen Quest for Glory from mostly walking episodes. Um, I feel it's like, it's th that is the primary thing that it's doing. Um, it's, uh, you know, obviously like it's it's got characters and it's got a plot and it's got um, stuff going on that they put into this game. Um, and some of that's not like their time and effort and energy, their design went into how can we recreate the feeling of Quest for Glory for new players. It wasn't like, you know, let's go over the writing a million times and make it perfect. Uh, it was, let's make this feel like Quest for Glory. And they do a good job of that. Uh, and there's uh, like, clearly there's a lot of love for that. Uh, franchise that has gone into this. There's there's lots of like winks. There's lots of things that I'm seeing that feel familiar. Um, favorite inside joke, callback, etc. In the game so far. Uh, 
the uh, so I don't know if this is legit, but the um, the monster in the wizards uh, the the head that was on the wall that was sculpted out of clay uh, really made me think hard of uh, a lot of the like so quest for glory the one that was on mostly walking I think the the VGA version uh, was done all all of the character portrait art was actually claymation uh, that was captured and digitized and pixel arted. Uh, and so there were, um, uh, I'm thinking specifically of like the gargoyle in Quest for Glory 1, uh, who is a similar character in, uh, uh, in the, the wizard's realm in that game, or... Um, there was some like very similar dragon but there was that was clearly like a clay creature i think that 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 was a wink at that um actually the 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 game that you can play in the, the like the wizards like hey let's play a game you cast magic spells in order to indirectly control a character through some sort of a maze um seems like somebody just took the game from quest for glory one and said okay let's fix this let's make it so that it works because uh, that game sort of didn't work um, and obviously i can't play the game yet so i don't know how good it is but once i get some I'm, I'm eager now to get some spells so that i can try to play that game and that feels like very much a nod to like that was a weird thing that quest for, for glory did like Let's take you out of the entire interface of the game and give you this little mini board game that you play indirectly controlling a, a character using your magic. Um, it's neat that it preserved the feel of that. Um, all right. In a game like this where the player has no choice but to play as a female, uh, how important is that decision from a design standpoint? How are you seeing its expression of gender happening? For instance, I like our not knowing much about the heroine because it's a typically male trope in Westerns to have the mo man with no name as a hero. Well, that's, that's interesting. That's a good point. People typically don't complain about the man with no name. Uh, although... Well, okay, so two things about that trope. One is, it's, it's extremely common in passive media. Uh, is it that common in, in interactive media? I can't think of, I mean, not that like Westerns are super common um, and I haven't played enough of Red Dead Redemption to actually know what the story of that game is. Um, do, 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 are there a lot of games where you play sort of literally the the, Un, the stranger who has come to town uh, at the time when the town is in trouble in order to right wrongs and save the day. Maybe. I mean, certainly that's who you play in the original Quest for Glory. Except, the man with no name is like an established badass, right? The man with no name is a gunslinger. He's somebody who goes from town to town, chased by past blah 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 uh but he's like he's he he's good he's like he's really good and that's he probably has a reputation or maybe he doesn't because he's got no name but he comes in and he he just like he you know he shoots the bad guys like he's he's really good at what he does um that is very different than this that is very different than the rpg trope of you start off at the at low level Oh, I remember what I was going to talk about starting off at low level. Did you guys play, uh, was it 2? God of War 2? So the, the other take on this, this is common in, in like all sorts of games, especially RPGs, but all sorts of games. Uh, start you out with as little power as possible so that it, you, you notice the difference when you gain power. Um, you... Uh, 
you know, there's there's always this kind of progression curve for games. God of War 2 did a really interesting thing that isn't, it's not unique, but it's one of the earliest and best examples that I know of it, um, which is that game starts you off with all of the powers you will ever get. It lets you be an unbelievable badass for 10 minutes. And then after the first boss fight, uh, it strips you of all of your powers and then you have to earn them back one at a time. And so it it accentuates this whole thing that I'm talking about both ways. It makes you at the beginning of the game, the beginning of the game being like once you're stripped of your powers, makes that feel like you're even less powerful than if you started off with nothing uh, by the contrast to what you just played. Um, but it also, you know, it, it makes you really feel that contrast so that then when you gain those powers back you feel like you've gotten unbelievably powerful again um all right yeah, that's that was my um this is gonna be impossible to uh to actually write what questions i'm answering in the youtube uh description because i'm answering them all out of order and twice sometimes and crazy things mm. So uh, I didn't answer the actual question, which is how important is the gender of the character as a design decision? Um, that's a tough question because I think it depends entirely on the game. Uh, it's, it, is, it is always a design decision. Uh, whether you play as a woman, you're required to play as a woman, you're required to play as a man or uh, you get to choose. Those are, that is a design decision in every game. Uh, you know, make no mistake. Um, how important is that design decision? It depends on the game. It depends on what the game is trying to say. Um, you can have a game that where the main character is a woman um, that is not about the fact that the main character is a woman. Uh, and um, if the game is well written, then it will reflect the gender of the character in subtle ways throughout the game, but it doesn't have to be about that. Um, so far, it doesn't feel like this is a game that is at least strongly about uh, the the gender, the femininity of me as the playable character. Um, except that uh, that one dude with the funny name, they've all got funny names, the one dude who was like really a misogynist dick, um, it is hard to have that character play the same way when your character is a man. Um, like, he made me really uncomfortable uh, because I was a woman, because I'm playing a woman, uh, in a way that, like, he wouldn't, like, I, he would make me uncomfortable even if I was playing a man, but not in quite the same way. Uh, and, um, you know, it's. It, you can't really get that effect any other way. Now, so far that hasn't really mattered. Like he's an extremely minor character so far and his misogyny doesn't play a part in pretty much anything. Um, so I don't know that it's, I like it, it still doesn't feel like this has been uh, a, a, a huge, had a huge effect on the character of the game. Um, and it doesn't feel like the game is really about that yet. Uh, could be that it turns out to be. Um, I don't know. I, you know, I, we're still, uh, my sense is that this is about a 15 hour game. We're a couple hours into it. So there's still a lot of game left for that to, you know, be a thing. Um, but so far I haven't seen it really be a thing. That said, like, you know, that's, it was a conscious decision. It's always a conscious decision that this is, the designer makes. Um, or it's always a design decision, at least. What is your opinion on the info dumps in this game, such as the Norns? Uh, they seem to get a bit excessive. 
Uh, I agree. I think they're a bit excessive. Um, and uh, in... Uh, like, uh, so Bethesda's games, especially the Elder Scrolls games, I feel like have gotten to a point where they do this really well. They've gotten really good at... Here's the story that the game is going to just, like, tell you that's part of the streamlined experience. Um, you know, when you walk into town, the guard comes up and he says, Hi, this is the town. There's a castle in the back. You can talk to the Jarl there. And uh, we're being beset by dragons. Maybe you can help us out. And that's, like, it. That's all of the, the context that you get by default. And then there's an enormous amount of context that you can seek out by uh, co in conversation sometimes. Um, and through the lore books that are scattered throughout the world, there's like a huge amount of exposition that you can get. And that feels, it's not just that it's optional, but it's, it's um, actually you can like, see the difference like it's, it's presented in different ways so uh i know that i will get the the core information that i need just by like going through the game and and like it will be presented in certain ways yeah yep i'm up here i'm here hello hi are you on camera do you wanna hey Check out. Yeah. Oh, you want you you like the mic? Okay. Here we go. Come in. Good girl. Um. Yeah. So I know that like I don't need to read lore books in order to get the basic information that I need for uh like figuring out what the next quest is um i i can I, so therefore i can take that information on my own terms seriously what are you doing what's going on up here are you are you are you kidding me are you just like really you're doing a thing tonight huh um and that i like i like when a game you know manages to compartmentalize information in a way that I can I can take it on my own terms um, and this game isn't great at doing that and maybe I'm learning like you know I don't have to do all of the dialogue options so far it hasn't been super clear to me like which dialogue options do I need to do and which ones are like second order information Um, but maybe I'll learn that. Maybe I'll figure that out better. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, but in general, I agree. There's, there's a, there's kind of a lot of info dump. It's a, it's kind of excessive. Um, uh, not a question, but super cute that you call Shiro, uh, baby and babe. Um, I do. That is true. That's that, uh, I, that. Uh, I, I'm a fan of pet names um, for uh, people that I care about, um, and Shiro gets lots of them. Uh, mostly, I call her uh, Bunny Rabbit um, for obvious reasons. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh God. Sorry, Smaxer. I'm. I, okay, in two minutes. Um, what is your opinion on Gamergate? Uh, I am uh, not a fan. Um, I think that the entire Gamergate quagmire is uh, a mess. Um, and it's kind of a mess on all sides. And, uh, and, and there's... Um, Hey, come on. There's a lot of uh, ugly stuff going on all over the place. Uh, but in general, I feel like the Gamergate agenda um, has never been explained to me in a way that isn't 
distastefully misogynistic. Um, and, uh, you know, there's theoretically a, a consumerist angle to that movement. Um, but I don't understand what it is and, uh, and, and the, the parts of it that I've engaged with that I felt were, you know, being honest, uh, being straightforward, that, that were like well-meaning, that were talking in good faith, I felt like had a, a fundamental, fundamental misunderstanding of the relationship between different parts of the games industry, uh, of the game development process. Uh, and um, of the sort of motivation that drives uh, game developers. Uh, and so um, it's hard for me to really find a like a, a part of that movement that I can engage with meaningfully. Um, everything else that I have uh, seen and engaged with from Gamergate has been um, really disturbing. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I, I, I think that there are people, I, I love people. Uh, and there are people who are well-meaning, who are maybe caught up in something that uh, that gets ugly, and I think that is actually happening on both sides. Um, but in general, Gamergate seems to stand too staunchly behind uh, really explicit misogyny and um, the assaults on women on Twitter that I see coming from Gamergate are difficult to watch. Uh, and again, I, I know that there's, you know, brigading that's happening on both sides, but it doesn't seem balanced to me. Um, I'm trying to be diplomatic, uh, but I'm, I'm strongly anti-Gamergate. Um, Okay, last question, because I don't want to end on that question. Uh, what is the game bringing to the table? I have no nostalgia. I'm personally not getting much out of the game. That might just be because of the constant dialogue, uh, which is boring me. It might also be an issue of spectation. I imagine the play experience is different. I will admit that the game has been slow uh, so far. Um, I have done, okay, so I, you know what? It's actually a great point. Like I've talked about this, the, this intro is nice and smooth and it's giving me a lot more backstory than Quest for Glory did. And compared to the Quest for Glory intro, I think it is, you know, positive, but compared to like King's Quest, uh, which I think overall, I would not grade as highly a game as Quest for Glory just because of the systems involved. Um, but a couple hours into King's Quest, like you're doing stuff. Uh, and um, I fought a brigand like three times and died twice. And, um, you know, other than that, I haven't done a whole lot. Uh, I've talked to people. Um, Quest for Glory is more like an RPG than your standard adventure game. And I don't, I mean, like, I think if you look at RPGs from this era, I gotta pull out some actual RPGs so that I can talk about specific concrete, concrete examples rather than just citing like RPGs. I'm mostly thinking about Final Fantasy three or whatever the one is that I played on the DS when it got re-released that um, is like, you know, little, it's tile-based, the tile-based one, I think. Um, 
where you know you could have like a, a red wizard or a white wizard or a black wizard and they had like spell lists and, and that kind of thing actually the one that I played actually had professions or something like that it got a little bit more intense but there's there, like the original Final Fantasy that was all just you know talking to uninteresting NPCs and then fighting monsters and grinding your spells up uh, I feel like ah, I don't know this, this, I'm not answering the question I'm just complaining about RPGs um, I'm going to play this game again we're going to do at least one more week of this I am hoping that it gets a little bit that I'm, I, my expectation is that it's going to get more action oriented the question is what is the game bringing to the table a little bit of sim and that's not a lot uh, I, I'm, I'm, I have like these stats and conditions that I have to manage uh, while I go around and talk to people and try to figure out like what exactly are my quests um, in my experience with quest for glory there is a lot of front-loaded what are my quests like t talk to people in town figure out what you're supposed to do and then go off and like I want to go find the herbs. Um, I want to like get some spells, and like clearly there's something I can do with that frozen bird, uh, or whatever that was. Um, like like I'm starting to get a lot of little leads in an adventure game sort of a way, but I haven't gotten to the point where I can actually like follow up on any of them. Uh, and I think that if I give this a little bit more time, I'm gonna get to start following up on some of those things. But I should not be praising this introduction to the experience as highly as I think maybe I have been. Um, because if I look at it from the point of view of somebody who's not steeped in nostalgia the way I am, uh, this is a pretty boring introduction. There's a lot of talking. There's a little, it's, the tutorialization is pretty good, but we have yet to really do anything meaningful and that's true i think that's fair um but i think it is it feels like it's setting up to me uh and so um i'm eager to see if it can follow through on some of the stuff that it's setting up bear with me for another week and uh and we'll see where it gets after that and then um, if it's just really a boring game then uh, we'll move on to something else um, okay before I go and now I have a whole list of things that I want to say uh, do not forget um, play by play community stuff going on this week Saturday at 8 o'clock Cage Tiger is streaming uh, I believe more Final Fantasy 6 I think is what she's been streaming um, Sunday at 6 o'clock Fun with Bill is uh, is streaming Secret of Mana, uh, which he's playing with his uh, girlfriend Maria, uh, and I caught some of the last of that one, and that was, uh, you know, you know Bill, he's Bill. That's a fun time. Um, Sunday at eight o'clock, uh, Sunday Game Club, um, Thanarod is continuing Kingdom Hearts, uh, I believe is the plan. Um, I'm excited to see where Kingdom Hearts takes us next. Uh, this coming Tuesday, uh, Feedback Force, the podcast, will release. Um, the, this episode is about uh, Rus, Rus, Rus. I don't know how to pronounce the name of that game. Um, uh, but it is a super cool looking game that I haven't had a chance to play yet. Uh, but I am hoping to find some time to play in the next few days and then um, uh, join in the conversation that is happening on the play-by-play -play forum uh, on that topic. The forum, by the way, is at uh, undefinedbehavior.com forum. Check that out. There's lots of cool stuff going on there. 
Um, and hopefully there will be more cool stuff going on there in the future. We're, we're sort of trying to make that happen. Um, you can always catch uh, old episodes of Play by Play on YouTube. Um, the link is in the Twitch um, description, whatever, below. And then um, the, the poll that I did this week was overwhelmingly positive. Uh, I will do a stream of uh, TIS 100 at one point. Um, probably won't happen this weekend. It probably won't happen in the next week. Uh, it'll probably happen sometime after the next play-by-play, -play, but um, follow me on Twitter for uh, up-to-date information. That's going to be just kind of like a random stream when I have a chance uh, because I don't want to do it as a regular play-by-play. -play. It's too esoteric a game, I think. But it will also go up on YouTube, so if you miss it live then um, and you want to watch it, then uh, it'll be up there. Um, cool. Thanks, everybody. Uh, this was lots of fun. Um, I, I, you know, I hope... I, I Yeah, I, I'm... I'm interested in seeing where this game goes and uh, if we can get more out of it. I think there was some interesting stuff that we learned about um, presenting narrative and, uh, and, and maybe not presenting narrative in terms of info dumps um, and uh, uh, and that kind of thing like there's there's stuff that we can take away from this game um and hopefully it'll pick up a little bit more in the next segment but i'm looking forward to that so thanks for joining me this week have a great week i'll see you around and i'll see you uh next wednesday for more play by play have a good night